With the 2018 version of InDesign, Adobe changed the way that EndNotes are handled. It's caused some difficulties for people, um, so I thought it was worth going over it. The feature is actually not as bad as its reputation has made it out to be. It's just that it's been implemented in a strange way, which makes it a bit confusing. Um, there's some valid problems people have had fitting it into existing workflows that were based around the static EndNote functions, but if you're not locked into that, there's actually a lot of value in using it. So let's just dive straight in. Um, hopefully, yeah, you can get an understanding of how these work and be able to make use of them. Um, if you're not familiar, EndNotes are found under the Type menu. You go to Document EndNote op Options. As you can see from the menu, they function very similar to footnotes. Um, InDesign has had active footnotes for a very long time. But yeah, the EndNote feature is new and it's what's been causing difficulties, so I'll just focus on that. So if you go into your EndNote Options panel, it's yeah, it's not, unfortunately not as straightforward as it should be, but it's not as complicated as it can be once you sort of get the hang of it. Um, I'll just briefly go over this and then I'll go through it, just sort of demonstrating because it's much easier than trying to explain it. Um, the header section is where you literally write in a title. That's what's inserted into your document above the references. So when you're talking about using references, it can get confusing because you're talking about the reference number in the text and you're also talking about the reference itself, which is the content. It's what your reference is. Say it's a book that you're citing or something like that. Um, there's not, it's not very clearly indicated in the interface, so it can get a little confusing when you're describing it. But So what we're talking about here is the header for the actual written content that goes into your endnotes. So, you know, endnote number one might have a book, endnote number two might be a quote or something like that. Where they're all written out as a list, this is the title that goes above them. The default title is just endnotes. You can change that to whatever you want. It's saved on a document by document basis. So you could give it a title that's specific to whatever you're working on. Um, like a lot of options in InDesign, if you don't have a document open and you try to work on this, what you will find is that you can change that for the application. So your default EndNote title, you can make that whatever you want. There's also an option to apply a paragraph style to it by default. Um, the document that I'm in, I've set up a couple of basic styles. So open that one up and just go with um, EndNote title. There we go. Uh, the numbering section is where it can get a little bit confusing because even though the dialog box here is broken up into different sections and it appears to be sequential, it's not. It's not a case of just going through and doing one thing here, one thing here, one thing here, etc. and then you're done. Settings down here, specifically the positioning options, actually affect the way that your numbering settings function. I won't bother trying to explain it now, it's easier to demonstrate it, but suffice it to say, depending on what you've selected down here, it will affect what happens with your settings up here. Um, otherwise, the numbering section lets you pick out the style of numbering that you want. It's the same as footnotes. So you can have, you know, numbers, letters, Roman numerals, that kind of thing. You can pick a starting number. Um, the continuous or restart every story, I'll go into shortly. Basically, it just determines the way that your endnotes are handled based on if you have multiple story frames in your document. So say, for example, you have a book where you might have a separate story for each chapter. You can set that up so that your endnote numbering will restart for each chapter, or you can have it set up so that it's simply continuous start to finish for the entire book. The default's continuous. I'll show some variations in that in a minute. Uh, the reference number in the text, again, the same as footnotes. You can set it up by default to just apply a superscript. Um, that will apply it in the text. However, if you want to make sure that you don't accidentally override that, you might also want to have a character style in your document for your superscript let, uh, numbers or letters. And the formatting, here is the actual formatting for the EndNote text itself. So this section here kind of goes with this section here. It's, yeah, really sensible. Um, this is where you can apply a paragraph style to it. So here I've got an EndNote style I've created earlier. And that is the formatting for the actual content of your EndNote. So this is the formatting for the number that appears inside your body copy. 
this is the formatting for the actual content of the endnote. So again, it's a citation or it's a quote or whatever. Uh, the separator is just the character that gets inserted after the number that's auto-generated. So the number is automatically created, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And then the content is inserted after that. The separator just lets you universally control what goes in after the number. The default is just a tab stop. You could, for example, insert, you know, a full stop or period character, and that'll give you a dot after your number and then a tab and then your content. So that's the default. Um, and here we get to positioning options, which is, again, as I said, the weird one which affects the numbering options. Scope basically means whether you want to have your endnotes all in one frame or in separate frames. If you have this selected in continuous mode, then that will give you just one great big long list of endnotes at the end of your document, starting at one and ending at however many you've got regardless of how many story threads you have in your document. If you change this to story scope and leave it as continuous, this actually becomes fairly irrelevant. It'll ignore the continuous selection and you'll simply get a new set of numbers for each story thread because it will create a separate frame for your endnotes to go along with each story thread. Um, the endnote frame option is just basically what will happen if you create when you first create an endnote in your document. Do you want it to just create a new frame for your endnotes on a new page, which it'll also create for you if it needs to? Or do you want it to load the place cursor up and then you can just simply drag out a text frame wherever it suits you? This option is borderline useless. Generally, you'll import your text from somewhere else and when you import it, it will completely ignore this option anyway. It will just, by default, regardless of what you've got set in here, it will give you on a new page. Prefix and suffix is just a quick way of simply wrapping something around your endnote. So for example, you want to have parentheses around it. That's easy to do. You just simply insert a prefix, insert a suffix, and then you just determine whether you want that to go around the number in the reference, the number in the text, or both of them. Hit OK. And we will now bring in a document. Okay, so. so here is the number in the text and what you didn't actually see because I hadn't scrolled down earlier is InDesign has created an entirely new page inserting that into the document and inserting the endnotes. So this is the content for each one. So this is now actively linked. So endnote number one is actively linked to the reference point in the document. Whereas in previous, all previous versions of InDesign, that would just simply be static text. There'd be no association with it. So if you needed to add an additional endnote, for example, between two and three, and if you've got like 50 endnotes in the document, you would have had to manually renumber every last one of them, including all the references in the actual text. It, yeah, that's not great. So to demonstrate what happens with the different settings, what I'm going to do is actually Add a couple of extra pages. Where are we? And what you can also see, if you can see it on the panel here, maybe, but also in the document itself, InDesign has kept the endnote frame at the end of the document. So inserting extra pages doesn't put them after the endnote frame. Now, what we're going to do is just import the same document again because that's easy enough to do. And we now have two frames with endnotes in them. This is because of the settings that we have up in our EndNote options. We have the positioning scoped to story. So what's happened is InDesign will now create a new EndNote frame for each story separately. So if we change that scoping to document level, our numbering is still continuous. So when we go back into our document, we will now see all of our EndNotes have been combined into one frame and they are numbered 1 through 10. You'll also find that in the two separate stories, these frames aren't threaded, they're two separate frames, and the reference numbers for our endnotes have updated. So sequentially, if I add another story, it'll continue on as you know, number 11, number 12, number 13, and so on. And those will all be added to the one frame at the end of the document. 
Okay, so that's one version of the settings that you can have. Now, the one that's a little bit strange is if you change the continue mode of numbering from continuous to restart at every story. Because what you can see now is 1 through 5, 1 through 5. Each frame, well, each story, sorry, will have its own set of numbers that will restart. Even though they're all gathered together with the positioning options, the scope is for document. So the entire document only has one frame for the endnotes. However, that frame contains numbers that will restart for every story, which seems very useless until you realize something else. This frame here, even though it has particular properties applied to it because it is an endnote frame, it is still a text frame. So I can come in here after endnote number five, I can put a new line in, and I could add, for example, a chapter title. And even if I go back to my first frame, to my first set of endnotes, and I find where I want to insert another endnote here, let's say. If I insert an endnote, it'll create a number six for this frame and move my title down along with all of the endnotes for that chapter, for that section, for that story. So I can add an additional endnote and everything will update properly. I can go back into my endnote options if I wanted to, and I can change it back to continuous numbering, and it'll update correctly. If I change the scope back to story, then you'll see this has gone back down to five because the references are associated with each frame, with each story now. So you can break up your endnotes and have them chapter by chapter if you wanted to. Say you had a book which was you know, running through a single InDesign file, which isn't a great idea, but you can do that. You can have your endnotes at the end of each chapter with this setting. But if you needed to, you can also simply come into here, change the scope, and InDesign will actually gather all of your endnote references together into the document for you. So it's actually a surprisingly powerful feature, it's just that it's been implemented in a very clunky way. And the inability to turn it off caused a huge amount of difficulty for people who had workflows that were very dependent on the old way of doing things, where you couldn't just suddenly change how they function. Okay, so this has just been a bit of an overview anyway, just showing you what you can and can't do with the EndNote function in InDesign in CC 2018. It's not something to really be afraid of. It's actually very straightforward once you sort of get a grip on the panel, which is unnecessarily confusing. So yeah, I hope that's some help anyway.